by request again, one more experiment uh, with this uh, driverless LED, sticking a capacitor across it. This time, instead of putting the capacitor across the um, incoming power supply or after the bridge rectifier, it's going to be across the LEDs. So the capacitor is going to be basically going like this. And as a precaution, I've put a 10 ohm resistor in series with it. The reason for the 10 ohm resistor is because at power up, if the capacitor is fully discharged, what this chip will see is basically a dead short circuit. Um, it's not, you know, it potentially, uh, this resistor down here will limit that current, but I just thought it's worth adding an extra one in because I don't want to actually damage these chips by the sort of sudden inrushes that tries to charge that capacitor. And the 10 ohm resistor isn't going to affect the uh, reading too much anyway. So that's the experiment. The way I've connected it is by going from the positive of the bridge direct far here, I've uh, taken the capacitor across and then I've cut a little bit of the silicon away here, uh, round about this position here, and I've tacked the wire onto there and that's the negative. So basically speaking, I've got the capacitor going across like that, and then the resistor in series, 10 ohm resistor, going onto there. So let's uh, see what happens now with the uh, power readings. If this doesn't just go pop, which it may do, you just never know. So let's test it. Still a modest amount of flicker there, but let's uh, do the finger test. That has dramatically improved the flicker. Okay, that's good. The current is showing as very similar to what it was before. Very similar to the overall readings before. So let's see if I can just focus on this. Let's uh, take the exposure lock off. So we've got 116 milliamps. We've got uh, the power factor is still at 0.9, which is pretty good. It's it's dropped slightly. Um, the uh, power is 25 watt, 26 watts, but it probably will drop slightly. Um, yep. So uh, I'm going to leave this cooking for a while, and we'll just see what happens. And I'll check the temperatures. So that's it been running for a while now, and the current has just dipped below 100 milliamps. The power has gone down to about 21 watts, and the power factor has also dropped a very tiny amount. So um, the chips, the regulator chips in here, I'll just turn this off now in fact. The regulator chips have, um, oh, here's a thing worthy of note, uh, short the capacitor out after you've turned it off because uh, it is basically charged the voltage across the LEDs. Uh, the regulator, the current regulator chips, both of them are running about 90 degrees Celsius, which is the what you'd expect. That's the sort of point they start regulating the current down themselves. The LED array was measuring around about 84 degrees Celsius. Um, the capacitor itself is quite hot because it's in the vicinity of all these hot components. So I think um, I'd recommend that if you did this, and it, it is a really an off-label application, it's, it's not a normal thing, um, I'd recommend that uh, the use of this resistor, uh, a 10 ohm resistor, this is a 1 watt metal film resistor by the look of it, uh, a 10 megafarad 450 volt, 400 volt capacitor, but I'd recommend actually maybe sleeving them and putting them down at the base here with a couple of wires going up to LED. But this is only if you actually needed an application that you wanted to remove flicker from some of these LEDs. Um, so if you've uh, not seen the other videos, I shall put uh, a link to them here. Uh, one of them where I completely shredded an LED uh, to find out what circuitry was used in this. And the other one, which was the first two tests that were done on this uh, LED with the capacitor just across the bridge rectifier.